factoring is so important, okay? So um, what I gave you at the door was the homework. We're gonna do some examples, and then I'm, I'm not gonna make you do the whole worksheet. I just want you to have enough to do to practice with. I will put the key to the whole worksheet on Canvas and so you can practice with more. But be smart students, guys. If, you're, if you get one through five done with me and you're not still understanding it, go and do some more and check your answers, ask for help, because we're gonna be doing factoring every day. Okay, enough of my lecturing. Um, and thank you for being so willing to put up your phones. I know you guys hate doing it. Um, okay, the first step in all factoring is to check for a GCF. What's a GCF? Yay, we already know something. Okay, so greatest, okay, that word means the biggest. The biggest number. Common. Common means that the common. I'll see you in a little bit, right? All right, greatest, biggest number. Um, common, which means what they have in common, okay? Um, you all have in common that you have me as your Algebra two teacher. You all have in common that you go to Countryside High School. Greatest, common, and then factor. I think that's the word we know the least about. Factor is a number that goes into another number evenly. Like three is a factor of six. Is three a factor of five? No, it doesn't go in evenly, you get a remainder, right? So the first type of problems that we're gonna have are just ones that have a GCF, okay? And you'll notice sometimes there's numbers, sometimes there's letters, sometimes there's both, okay? So what I want you to think of each of these problems as, as is as two separate pieces, numbers and letters. So let's start with numbers. Looking at the 12 and the eight, What's the biggest number that they have in common that is a factor? What's the biggest number? Four. It has another factor, right? A common factor of two, but that's not the greatest common factor. So the biggest number that goes into 12 and eight is four. So I'm gonna write that down. Now the letters, I have a, a way to explain the letters because it's kind of confusing. So I'm saying with the numbers, we want the biggest number that they have in common, but with letters, you really want the smallest number. And let me explain that. Think of the exponent as money, okay? This is Geo, Geo has $2, okay? This is Shane, Shane has $1. They're both going to Chick-fil-A and they have agreed that they're gonna spend the same amount of money. So one isn't gonna spend more or less than the other. How much can they each put in? $1. So that n to the first is our common factor. That's what they have in common. They both have at least one dollar. Now Shane has one more, but what can they both afford to pay at Chick-fil-A? One dollar. Okay, so the moral, and I'm going to say Chick-fil-A to you to remind you of that. So with the variables, you take the smaller number, because that's all the, the more broke person can afford. Okay, all right, that's our GCF. Your, <laughs> this is your GCF, okay? What we do now is put whatever's left over in the parentheses. What I mean by leftover is when I divide both of these terms by 4n, whatever I get goes in the parentheses. This is just the reverse of the distributive property. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and you subtract your exponents. If there's 2 on top, think about that. There's 2 n's on top, 1 on the bottom. I can cancel 1 here and 1 here. There's just 1 left, right? 2 minus 1 is one, n to the first, but we don't write the one. Negative eight divided by four is negative two. And if we have an n on top and an n on bottom, they just cancel out, right? So there's no n left. That's the end of the problem. That's the answer. Look, look what we just recreated. We created a problem that we could check it in reverse by doing the distributive property. Four n times three n is 12 n squared. Four n times negative two is negative eight n. That's GCF, okay? Let's try another one. Again, keep them separate, numbers and letters. So with seven and 21, what do they have in common? Seven, not three. Three goes into 21, but three doesn't go into seven, okay? 
Because think about it, in a minute, you're gonna have to divide seven by seven and divide 21 by seven. So it has to go into it evenly. Okay, so seven. We have two X's and how many X's here? None. What's the smaller number, two or zero? Zero. So we don't pull, they don't have an, so Shane can't go to Chick-fil-A. He doesn't have any money, okay? Because he can't, he can't put any money in. They don't have money in common at all, right? Seven is our only GCF. So then we divide both of these by seven and whatever's left goes up in the parentheses. So that would be x squared, right? Seven divided by seven. You don't need to put the one there. You could, but you don't need it. And then 21 divided by seven is three. One more of these. Look at my numbers. I have a four and I have a, what's this number? One. What's the biggest number that four and one have in common? One. And if there were no X's that they had in common, I would need to write it, okay? But I'm not gonna put a one in front of a variable because how many X's do I, they have in common? Two dollars, one dollar, one dollar. Okay, so I don't need to put the one in front. It's not wrong to put a one in front, okay? Because they do have a one in common, but you don't really need to put a one in front of the X, okay? Whatever's left over goes in the parentheses. So I'm gonna divide this guy by X and this guy by X. Okay, so four divided by one, basically just four, right? Subtract your exponents, two on top, one on the bottom, we have one left, right? X times X is X squared. And then what will I have left on this side? Minus one, right? The X's cancel and you're left with negative one. Check it, x times 4x, do I get 4x squared? Yes. x times negative one, do I get negative x? Yep. Okay, so that's GCF. Are we feeling okay about that? Anybody have a question on just that? Okay, here we go. We are now gonna talk about a super, super special problem, okay? It's called a quadratic trinomial. Quadratic means it's got an exponent of two, the biggest power is two, called its degree. And tri means three, like tricycle, three terms, okay? And this is the form that it's in. Ax squared plus bx plus c. So you should be able to recognize these. They're easy to tell. You see an exponent, the biggest exponent you will see is a two, and there's one, two, three terms. It's a very specific type of problem. You'll hear me call it a chart problem, okay? This is probably gonna bring back some memories for you. This might have from Algebra 1. This probably will from Algebra 1 as well, even if you don't remember it. Most students don't remember how to factor from Algebra 1. You have geometry stuck in the middle of your two algebra classes, right? But um, this is the most common type of factoring we ever have to do in any math class. So this one's really important. Now I call it a chart problem. So like when I come around and help you, I'll be like, that's a chart problem, remember? And you'll be like, oh, a chart. Um, and it's just recognizing it's this type. And so I'm gonna teach you my method. But truthfully, if you lined up 100 algebra teachers and had them teach how to factor this, there's probably 12 different methods. There truly is a lot of methods. Um, so yeah, after I go over this, if it, you think back, oh, I remember my awesome eighth grade math teacher taught me this method and I liked it. You can always use another teacher's method, okay? I'm not so narcissistic to think that I, my way is the only way, all right? So just understand, if you think of another way to do it, that's okay, as long as you're getting it right, all right? So here's the thing. The chart problem is this. You're gonna make a little, what I call like a, I just call it a chart, like a little T, okay? And what's gonna go in this spot right here is your, a times C, so leave a little space under it so we can just write what it looks like. So A times C goes here, so whatever the A value is and the C value, whatever those numbers are, you multiply them together and you put it here, and then the B value goes here. And what we're looking for, it's kind of fun, is the two numbers that multiply to get this number and add to get this number, okay? So let's do an example. So I go, oh, this is a quadratic trinomial. I'm going to make my little T chart. So A is one, right? A is one. So one times 14 is gonna go right here. What's one times 14? 14. 
my B value will go here, nine. Now you're gonna ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to get this one, add to get this one? This is your workspace. Make as many mistakes as you want. Like one thing to do, like if you are having a hard time even starting a problem, the best thing to do is come up with all the numbers that multiply to get 14. Like one times 14 is 14, what else? Yeah, two and seven, seven, two, doesn't matter the order, right? Do either of those sets of number also add up to get nine? Yeah, we found our two numbers, okay? So two and seven, multiply to get 14, add to get nine. We're ready to write our final answer. Here it is. Yes, sometimes you say that. <laughs> Dylan. Yes, like I said, you, this will feel familiar. This is not brand new. Remember, I called it a review for a reason. I'm just not going to be thinking that you should know it. Algebra 2 people that write the book think I shouldn't review this. This is me adding this in. They're like, they should already know how to review. They learned it 500 years ago. So, but we know that that's not the case. Okay, so here's how we write our final answer. It's x squared, so I'm just going to put an x in the front of each set of parentheses. And then I bring the 2 and the 7 over. They're both positive. I can put a plus in front of them because of that, and it doesn't matter the order. You can put the positive two or the positive seven first. That is your final answer. What we just did is the reverse of foiling. If I wanted to check this, I could do x times x and x times seven and two times x and two times seven. I would get that, okay? Let's do another one. So a is one, right? There's a one in front. and C is 26, so what two numbers multiply to get 26 and add to get, what am I gonna put here? Negative 15, so be careful with the negatives. Here we start incorporating negatives. That first one was really easy because everything's positive in the problem, everything's gonna be positive in your chart, okay? But when we have a negative in there, we have to be careful. So here's my suggestion until you get comfortable with it. You will get to the point you don't even need to make a chart. You should just be able to come up with the numbers. It really will happen if you take this seriously and learn it the way I'm asking you to. But in the beginning, don't even worry about the sign. Just think 26 and 15. I have to come up with two numbers that make a 26 when I multiply and a 15 when I add or subtract, okay? So think about listing some factors of 26. One times 26, two and 13. Is three go into it and you might not know all of them by heart you can use your calculator four uh no okay those are all the factors do you see something that might make a, a 15 the two and the 13 so i'm going to play with those numbers i'm going to put a plus in between them but remember i need to make it a negative 15. what can i do to a two and a 13 to make a negative 15. what did you say make them both negative right if you have a negative 2 and a negative 13, check it in your calculator if you're not good with your negatives. Negative 2 plus negative 13 is negative 15. But does it work in this column? I always say you have to make both <coughs> columns happy. This column's happy. Let's do the same thing over here. Is negative 2 times negative 13 positive 26? Yes. Everybody's happy. We have our answer. We're ready to write our answer, okay? Which is gonna be two parentheses. You always just flip the X's, just like we did in the last one. And you bring negative two and negative 13 over. Guys, the order doesn't matter. It's multiplication. Nine times seven is the same as seven times nine. So it doesn't matter which one you put first. All that matters is that the signs are right, okay? Do one more of these. Okay, so make a little chart. A times C. A is one, C is negative 27, right? So we're gonna find two numbers that multiply to get 27 and adds to get negative six. Don't get hung up on the negatives. Just think 27, six, 27 and six. So one and 27, that's not gonna work, right? Three and nine. Ooh, can I make a six with a three and a nine? That's when I play with that number. Remember, you can make mistakes over here, cross things out, make that negative, change it, make the other one negative. 
you do all your work here, then you just go plug it into your answer and you're done. So when I um, put three plus nine over here, then I play with the sign. Now here's the mistake people make. Listen, this is very important. The mistake students make is they make their decision on the negative in this column. It doesn't matter in this column. Three could be negative or nine could be negative. In both situations, you get a negative 27. So you can't decide over here. It really matters over here, right? Negative three plus nine or three plus negative nine. Which one are you gonna make negative? It makes a difference, right? Here is positive six, here is negative six. We want negative six. Who's gonna be negative? Nine. So when you are deciding on your signs, always go to your plus column because it matters there. This column's not very picky. He doesn't care. Nine or three, I get negative 27. But over here, we're very picky, right? So we're happy in both columns, ready to write our answer. Plus three, minus nine. I don't care which one goes first. As long as the nine is negative and the three is positive, it makes no difference at all. Are you able to see from this one? Can you see a little bit? So that is a quadratic trinomial, okay? Notice, we're not done. Notice the ones above, those are not quadratic trinomials. They're quadratics, they all had an exponent of two, but there were only two terms. So it's not a chart problem. You can only do a chart problem if the um, polynomial looks like this, okay? There is another type of quadratic trinomial. These are the hardest ones. Then I have one more that's the easiest one of all, okay? So buckle your seatbelt, stay with me, okay? This, these are both quadratic trinomials. They look just like the ones we just did, except for what? What's different in these problems? Your A value is different. Look, A is two in this one, A is three. What was A in all of these? One, one, the one was in front of the expert. This is the easy chart problem. These are the, we're not gonna call them hard, we're gonna call them the longer chart problems. Let's go. We start by a chart. Just same exact thing we just did. So we want to find two numbers that multiply to get A and C. So remember, now we're multiplying by two. Two times negative six is negative 12. And what is our B value? Where is he going? Oh, okay. Can you just sit in a different seat for me? Because I have someone in your seat. Um, and B is one, right? So 12 has a lot of factors. You can maybe go right to it in your head, but like I said, in the beginning, if you're struggling with that part, you could kind of start listing them. One times 12, two times six, three times four, any of those gonna make a one? Three and four, right? So let's play with three and four. How do I make a one out of three plus four? one of them's gonna be negative. Remember, we're gonna make that decision over here though. If the three is negative, we get positive one. Make sure it works over here. Negative three times four, negative 12, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to, this, so the, the reason this one is longer is we can't go right to our answer on this one, okay? What we have to do, anytime there's a, a, a value here that's not one, we can't just go x minus three x plus four. That's a very common mistake students make. Here's what we do, okay? Stay with me. We're gonna bring down the outside two terms. So bring down the two x squared and the minus six. A sign that's in front of a number stays with that number. So that six is actually negative, okay? Guys, I see you doing such a great job and I appreciate it. I see everybody writing and trying. I know this is no fun. Nobody says factoring is their favorite thing to do in the world, okay? Maybe except me. No, not even me. Okay, so I bring down the outside too, and then you split the middle. We're gonna split one X into two terms. What two terms do you think that's gonna be? These. The reason we did this is because it equals one X. 
The only thing we have to change is put an X on both of them. Now, it doesn't matter which one you put first, but if one of them is negative, it is easier to put the negative first. So all I did was grab my two numbers from my chart that we agreed on, put X's on them, and see, it should make sense. Negative 3X plus 4X is that term above it, 1X. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Okay? So what we just created is a polynomial with four terms. There's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? What we do is this. We split it into two. Parentheses around the front two, parentheses around the back two. Believe it or not, we're almost done. Sorry. I should have given myself more space. And you're going to treat your parentheses as two separate problems for a moment. Remember what we did in the very first examples? We, we, we found the GCF. We're doing the same exact thing here. What is the GCF of 2 and 3? Just one, right? They only have one in common. But how many X's do they have in common? Chick-fil-A. One. So the only thing they have in common is X. Divide them both by X. And we get 2x minus 3. Okay, see that plus sign right there? Just bringing it right down. We do the same exact thing to the back, but there's something really cool about to happen. Okay, just get excited to tell you. But what do 4 and 6 have in common? 2. Chick fil A, $1, no dollars, no dollars, right? So just a 2. They don't have, they both don't have money to go to Chick fil A. Paris is probably like, what the heck is she talking about? Um, then we divide both of these by 2. Notice anything special that just happened? If we did it right, which we did, the parentheses, the parentheses should be what I call as identical twins. They are exactly the same. Um, so... Wait, wait, wait. So there was a plus sign in between these two terms. Okay, look, look, look. Right here, look. I brought this plus sign down right here. And then I said, what's the GCF of, of these two? Two. Two goes. It's exactly what we did here. It's, it's exactly this, just embedded in another problem. Um, okay, I'll come back. Let me just, I'm about to write the answer and I promise I will address that, okay? Because if, if you have it, I'm sure lots of people have it. So once again, the plus sign here, what do they have in common was a two, divided both by two, and I got that. So this is just two times two X is four X, two times negative three is negative six, okay? We're ready to write our final answer, finally, which is two parentheses. The identical twins go in one of them. Doesn't matter which one. Remember, the order doesn't matter. So you can put the 2x minus 3 here or here. It doesn't matter. Okay? Look what's left. x plus 2. I always make the hearts. Okay, so what's the difference? Why is this one different? Well, we know to do this because of the 2 versus a 1. Think about it. So here's the mistake that a lot of students make. Don't write this. They would have said, okay, oh, it's, it's a chart problem. So I put X's here, like we did in the last one, and my numbers are negative 3 and 4. And they'll get this problem wrong, okay? Think about it in reverse, guys. If I checked this, I would do X times X is X squared and the whole thing, get my two middle terms by myself. I would not get this answer. But look here. If I foiled this one out, I'd do 2X times X is 2X squared. That's the difference because there's a number there. So we're going to do one more of those, and I'll show you the easiest one of all. But understand, when there's a 1 here, you could do, and some <clears throat> teachers do make you do this, do the bring down the outside to split the middle. It works on these two, but why do all that work when there's a nice shortcut, okay? So you can use the shortcut when A is 1. When A is anything but 1, you can't, like this one. So we recognize it first. Quadratic trinomial, I'm going to make myself a chart. Don't leave out the A. This is A, this is C. 
3 times 10 is 